Oh, hey, you there. I gotta tell you something. You won't believe this. The internet has a bunch of people that have wrong opinions. I know, it's crazy. Hold on, I gotta go hide right quick because they're gonna start getting me, but I'll be right back. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the show where I had to hide from fanboys and haters for a bit. It's a rough life out there when you have a different opinion than everybody else. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today's Adaptation Saturday. Happy Saturday. If you're new around here, on Saturdays we talk about the things that were once one thing, but now they're adapted into something completely different. That's why it's called Adaptation Saturday. Apparently, people say that Season 4 of The Flash is bad. And they're right. The Flash is a bad show. Go watch Titans instead. Where's Batman? Hey, little birdie's alone. Actually, I quite liked season four of The Flash because, well, let's take a look at it. My name is Iris West. Will you marry me? Yes. And I was supposed to marry the fastest man alive. Keep loving. Keep running for me. I promised him I'd run. So that's what I've been doing, running as fast as I can. While most people that have seen The Flash started with Arrow first in 2012 and then was introduced to The Flash as a spinoff, I had a very different perspective. I went straight into The Flash with no information whatsoever about the other shows in the Arrowverse. I also had the opportunity to pretty much binge my way through season one and take a break, only to finish the next three seasons within the past few months. So I do understand that there is a difference between watching a show week to week and binging a show at your leisure. Shows like The Flash are meant to be watched week to week. The pacing is created in a way where you're enticed to want to come back next week, so there's cliffhangers and loose strings and questions to be answered. This can be good because it'll keep you coming every single week, but it can also be a problem because you can get impatient wanting answers to questions that maybe would be better answered earlier on in the season rather than later. Meanwhile, if you're binging a show on Netflix, you can just keep watching as long as you don't have any work to do and you're cool with not getting any sleep that night. I bring this up because it's probably the reason why so many people dislike season four of The Flash. I have a feeling that the pacing isn't the best and it caused a lot of fans that tuned in every single week to watch, left wanting more and feeling like plot lines were being played out for far too long. For me, I didn't have this issue, because like I said, I could just go to the next episode, and if it wasn't that great, then the next episode probably would be. I think this is also an issue with season three, but I don't want to talk about season three anymore, because the more I think about it, the more of a disappointment it becomes. Either way, season four of The Flash does a lot of things better than previous seasons. It actually improves on so many of the things that I talked about in my season two review, where I was concerned that the show had peaked too early, and that there was only a handful of things that it could do to really keep my interest. My main concern with the show early on was that it wouldn't be able to showcase a big villain that was intimidating enough considering that Barry had already defeated Zoom, the most intimidating villain the show has offered so far. And in some ways, I still felt like the Thinker, or DeVoe, the main villain in season 4, isn't as intimidating as Zoom, but instead he's intimidating in different ways. And that's why I love his character so much. Zoom did this thing where, you know, he was the fastest man ever, and so he was a really big threat to Barry and Team Flash. How are you going to stop someone that you can't catch? Season 3 kind of did the same thing, making Savitar actually be the fastest man ever, and he was so much more faster than Zoom to the point where it was actually impossible to stop him. So Team Flash had to come up with an alternative that if you can't catch him, you have to start the creation of him. But Season 4 is different. See, the Thinker isn't a speedster, which is exciting because we haven't seen that yet. Not only that, but his metahuman abilities are super intelligence. This means that Barry and Team Flash have to work on a completely different level here. They have to strategize against a man who has already thought of every single conceivable action that could happen. Add in the fact that the Thinker created new metahumans, designed entirely to kill them and take their abilities. So at the end of this season, we've got a really strong villain that can do all these incredible things like manipulate minds, shapeshift in anyone, control sound waves, and even manipulate luck. He seems like an unstoppable force. And that was what I found so dope about his character is that it took some of the out of the box thinking for Team Flash to win against him. So while I still like Zoom more, the Thinker ended up adding brand new elements of intimidation that makes him probably my second favorite big villain in the series. 
At the end of my Season 2 review, I gave three criticisms and solutions to how future seasons of The Flash could be better. It just so turns out that Season 4 fixed all of those criticisms that I had, making me enjoy this season a lot more than I thought I would. The first criticism I had was that the drama elements needed to be better. This show has, for the most part, leaned on the drama to keep the show interesting when the superhero stuff isn't happening. For the most part, I don't mind drama in a TV show. In fact, I enjoy character growth and the interactions between characters. I don't mind if there's relationship stuff in my superhero show, and let's be honest, drama is just a big part of life and we grow as individuals through the oftentimes hard relationships that we have with our family, friends, and romantic partners. So while a lot of people don't like the CW drama aspect of The Flash, I don't mind it at all, and sometimes I quite like it. But there are moments when the drama ends up just being cheesy and weak, and that was what I had mentioned in my Season 2 review. When you introduce drama to a part of the season, that's where I had fault in your show. Fortunately, I think that Season 4 does a good job at fixing a lot of that. Barry and Iris get married, so there's not any of that, I wonder if they're going to break up this week, tension all the time. A lot of the unnecessary relationship elements are completely gone. We don't have Caitlyn trying to date someone that's just going to end up dying or leaving. The Harrison Wells of the season doesn't have some stupid tacked on relationship at the end. Joe and Cecile are having a baby, so their relationship has to stay strong. Wally and Jesse are broke up, which only leaves Cisco and Gypsy as the main drama relationship thing within the season. And I'll be honest, I like their relationship issues. It's not some overly stupid, petty thing that could have been avoided throughout communication. It's actual concerns that make sense. So I do think that season four improved on the drama in the show. My next big criticism of the show until season four was the tone. I was looking forward to more comedic moments, and especially with season three, which ended up being frankly quite edgy at times, I wanted a happier cast that wasn't drugged down by the weight of someone's future death. And I think that season four did a great job with handling this balance of dark moments and comedic moments. Specifically with the addition of the character Ralph, I found myself laughing way more in season four than I ever laughed in season one through three, and it just made it a more enjoyable show overall. But my main last criticism with the show, and honestly it's still kind of a criticism, even with season 4 improving on this, I think that they could continue improving on this as a whole, and that's their metahumans. There are some dumb, bland, and non-interesting metahumans throughout this show. I know that metahumans are just plot devices, but man, if season 4 showed me anything, it's that they can write great and interesting metahumans as well. Out of the 12 metahumans in season 4, I really enjoyed a few of them, and I at least liked half of them. Sure, there were a couple of really dumb ones, like Black Bison, who could bring inanimate objects to life, and she honestly could have been dope had they added more to her character and upped the budget a bit. But don't forget that Ralph, Elongated Man, was one of the main metas in the season, and he's a really great fleshed out character. We also got episode 3 of the season titled Luck Be A Lady, one of my favorite episodes of the season. We were introduced to the meta Hazard, who's not only got a dope power, but also a compelling backstory and ends up being used a few times in the season. Add on the Fiddler, Melting Pot, and Folded Man, and we got some really neat metas with super interesting abilities and actual character development, which I can't say for most of the metas in the show. If The Flash does anything better in the future, I'm hoping that they'll do more of what they did in Season 4 and incorporate better metahumans. Not really in the ability per se, but in the character development. When I look at Season 4 of The Flash, there's a few things that could be improved on it that would make it better. The pacing isn't always the best, and oh, I didn't talk about how awful the character Amunet is, and why her entire storyline should be eradicated, but at the end of the day, I had way more fun with this season than I did with season three. Not only were there great episodes like The Trial of the Flash, Therefore I Am, and Enter Flash Time, but there was a compelling villain that added new heights to the show, and there was the villain's wife that made the main plot even better. The finale was the best finale since season one, and even the moments where Barry was in prison were really dope. I'm sure that there are big problems that people have with Season 4, and I'd love to hear about them down in the comments section, but honestly, the things that I was worried about in Season 3, about whether I'd want to keep on watching this show, I had the complete opposite feeling during Season 4. I just wanted to watch more, and I'm even more excited for the future of The Flash. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now.
In today's world, everybody needs a website. If you're a content creator like myself, you need a website. If you own a business, you need a website. If your first name is Susan and you got 25 cats that you want to share with the world, you need a website. But in order to have a professional sounding website, you gotta have it hosted. Here's where Bluehost comes in. Starting at just $3.99 a month, you get a free domain, you get free SSL included, one-click WordPress installs, and 24-7 support. As someone who worked in a web development company for two years, I can tell you that a lot of hosting sites make things way too complicated to put in your domain name. So having this one-click WordPress install is not only a great feature, but a huge time saver. Check out the link in the description box below to get your free domain name today and tell them Zach sent you. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you disliked it, you can dislike the video, that's fine. This is the last episode about the Flash TV show for now. We won't have anything else until season five is finished later on this year. The next few adaptation Saturdays, I have some comic book movies. Then we're gonna get into the MCU, which is more comic book movies. There's plenty of other different stuff coming down the pipeline in the future. Go ahead and subscribe to Your Everyday Nerd. Hit that notification bell so you can see new episodes sooner rather than later. And I will see you on Monday. Goodbye.